Well, good evening, my New Providence family and our Facebook friends around the world. Hope that you guys are tuning in to be part of our Wednesday night Bible study. I'm uh, gonna gonna share some scripture and then some prayer time in just a few moments. So we'll let a couple of folks um, sign on. I'm watching the monitor to see if they're they are um, since when you sign on. So hope you're doing that. I don't see anybody yet. Is there anybody? I'm I'm watching the screen. Don't see it um, as I am moving and shaking and dancing here tonight. Um, there's a few for there. Hi, Connie Whitson. Good to see you tonight. Uh, and I can see your face, so that's that's awesome. Glad you're here with us. Say what? Mac had his shot for his back. Uh, how is he doing, Miss Connie? Um, is did he uh, come through that shot okay? Is it helping to ease the pain any? There's Mike Davis. Hi, Michael. Caroline. There's Miss Jean. Hi, Billy Jean. Do y'all know that that's what the old timers, the Hotchkiss Valley people called her? Billy Jean. I like that. Uh, let's see here. So Miss Connie post us a message on there how Mac is doing with his after his shot this week. See a couple more folks signing on there. Let's see. Uh, Still watching, still waiting. Um, right now, and this this evening is just Pastor Gary and I back here in the studio. For at this time, Miss Deb comes in in about forty five minutes, um, so we are waiting on her. She'll help us with the prayer request. There, Miss Connie said Mac did okay. He has another one of those shots in four weeks, so. Thank you for that update, uh, Miss Connie. Let me add him to my prayer list right now as I'm waiting on a few more folks to um, sign on. Okay. Thank you for that. There you go. Anybody else uh, signing on there? You got, I think you, you need to say I'm here or something, I believe, for me to be able to see it. I think Pastor Gary can see when folks are coming on, but uh, I see, oh, looks like we've got at least 13 people watching now, so getting ready to get started. Going to have a couple of different um, uh, passages of scripture tonight, and and my, my topic, I, I'm going to give I'm giving them just a, a couple of minutes. Did Darren Lawson give me a Star Trek uh, greeting, looks like? Um, let's see, a couple of folks uh, we're, we're going to deal with tonight. How you decide if you're going to send your children back to school or going to distance learn or whatever. I'm going to help you make that decision. And I'm, I'm bold. Pastor Gary just fell out of his chair. He said, don't do it, don't do it. But I think that that's part of my responsibility to help you make some tough decisions in your life for your family. And so we're going to look and see what Scripture says about that kind of thing. So we'll be there in just a moment. So I'm giving a few more minutes. I hope we have some parents on here tonight, folks who are struggling and to, to make that decision. Should we send our children back to school uh, or do distance learning? Uh, can I send mine back to school? Nope, Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn's daughter went to school with my son, my oldest son. So she's old, Carolyn. Please tell Mindy I said that. Um, they're, they're a little too old to, uh, for us to make that decision. But, um, and this, this uh, how we're going to look at this scripture about making tough decisions can be applied to any difficult decision. This is biblical counsel on how you make hard decisions. And so uh, particularly right now, the school question is, is uh, in place. So we're going to do that. Okay. All right. Well, let me get started with a couple of announcements. First of all, you see me wearing the mask and it is a reminder for me, uh, your son went to school with Joseph. So both your kids went with both my kids. There you go. Um, so anyway, I'm wearing a mask this evening. I'm getting ready to take it off, but I'm wearing it as a reminder to you and to me. Um, we the, This COVID-19 thing is certainly not going to go away in the immediate future. 
So we've got to take every precaution we can. I am trying my best. I am trying so hard to be able to keep us open and have worship services on Sunday morning. Again, my goal is that we come back on Sunday nights by the end of the month. And uh, right now, with the increase in people being tested positive and all that, it's just not um, not looking good, to be honest with you. School's about to start in just a couple more weeks. I just watched, uh, before I came here, I was watching the... Um, the uh, Knox County Schools announcement about their reopening plan for school. The superintendent of the schools was talking to the school board and, and some others, and they were going to vote on the proposed plan. And um, it's, it's a complicated plan, and, and he, he didn't seem overly optimistic to me about it. They're doing the, trying to get Chromebooks and uh, laptops to every student so they could do... Uh, uh, at home learning if they if they end up going in and having an outbreak and coming back he talked about things like um, in their school system instead of shutting down all of Knox County if there's an outbreak somewhere maybe like in North Knoxville just shutting down the school that that would involve instead of everybody and those kids would be required to, to do their distance learning he, one of their suggestions is to take out um, uh, five days of their sick days and um, and when they sick or weather related days and when they do that uh, uh, require the kids to do schooling at home with their computers so there's a lot of complicated pieces I don't know uh, both Lenore City and Loudoun County have have gotten their plans uh, out and then they're available for you now on the school's websites and you can find those about the schools and, and decisions to when you, you have to make a decision to bring your kid back to school or if you're going to do distance learning. Then most of them are asking that you make a commitment to a full semester, whichever way you, you go. So just a lot of things to it. And, and, and I just to be honest with you, I am expecting, I, I truly am expecting uh, some problems with any of the schools going back. I think there's going to be some outbreaks. And they're going to have to deal with that some way. I don't know how. But I'm trying our best for us at New Providence to not cause anything, not to be the source of, a, of an outbreak or whatever. So that's why I'm wearing this mask right now, just to remind you of that. And I'm going to ask you now, if you would, this Sunday, for all of you who are planning on coming to be with us this Sunday, I'm going to ask you, uh, if you would, to, to wear a mask. I haven't done that yet, it's, and it's certainly, you, we're not going to turn you away. But I, I just I just feel a little bit of a burden that we, uh, we try our best to protect everybody. We've had fewer people who've signed up and registered for to come to church, and I think that's one of the reasons, because they, they feel like folks won't wear the mask. This past Sunday, there were more wearing masks than any other time. So in, in my mind, I think we should wear them at least until we get past the, the foyer and you get past the, the, the host and hostesses and the greeters to get you to your seat. Once you get in your seat, then you're socially distanced by our marked off seats. So if you don't want to sit there with a the mask on, you can take it off at that time. Uh, um, or, or you can wear it however you feel most comfortable. But I just think that that's one more way that we can do one more thing to help protect other people. Again, you don't have to wear them. I'm not going to force that on you or whatever. But I'm, I'm going to wear a mask. I, I haven't done it yet. But uh, just in my heart, I, I just thought I, I want to protect everybody to the best of my ability. I've not been, to my knowledge, I've not been subjected to anybody with COVID-19. But as as uh, contagious as, as the CDC claims this is, chances are pretty good. All of us have been around somebody at the grocery store or wherever we might go. And then when we get back to school, I think it's going to be even more likely. And, and they're going to try their best. And man, I want you to pray for our schools, our, our administrators, anybody in a leadership role is trying to make these decisions. It is very, very serious. Uh, we, Gary and I were talking just a few minutes ago. There's a, a large church, a mega church in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, um, it, it's the North Point Church. They're not trying to hide it. They've announced it on, on a Vimeo um, video yesterday. Uh, the North Point Church, the pastor is Andy Stanley. Andy is uh, Charles Stanley's son. Some of you know one of the two or maybe both of those guys. But it's a mega church, multi-campus. I've been to their campuses before. I've attended worship services there. 
but they have have been closed since uh, March and, and uh, their services face to face services and their goal was to reopen on August 9th. So they've been meeting, talking to other large churches. We have our own problems trying to do this. And we're, we're fortunate in a kind of a medium-sized church that our facility is large enough for us to socially distance and do a couple of uh, services and, and, and reserve seats and all that kind of traffic patterns and stopping flow. We're very, very blessed. Small churches really can't do that. They just don't have the facilities. And large churches with memberships of 10 or 20,000, they really can't do it as well. And so that's what he was coming, came on the, the video last night to tell it, that his people and, and the world. Uh, I, I imagine they probably have a television broadcast, but there he said, instead of us trying to come back on August 9th, when we just don't think we can safely do it, there's been an uptick in the number of, of, a, of a, a, a positive tests in Atlanta area. So he said, we just don't think we can do it safely and do it with quality So and bring back children. And, and Bible studies, they're still doing Zooms and um, uh, Sunday school. Um, they're doing a few small groups with some social distancing. But he said, we are not going to reopen the campus. Listen to this. We are not going to open the reopen the campus in 2020. They He announced yesterday they are going to keep their church services uh, uh, online only for the next five months. And I, I, Gary and I are just both kind of dumbfounded. I, I don't know that, that that's, and, and I'm not trying to judge anybody else. Every, every pastor, these, these are hard decisions. Every pastor and church leadership team and all that have to make them. But boy, that broke my heart when I saw it. I can't imagine these church members, that'll be going on nine months that they haven't met together in corporate worship, and that's just difficult. So I, I want you to pray for for all of our sister churches trying to make these decisions, how long we should be closed, can we do this service or a drive-in service, or can we socially, does our building facilitate that? Um, the, these are tough times, guys, and I'm, I really am, am just... Uh, trying my hardest to make the decision. So this Bible study tonight is, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, this is what I'm doing with our staff and with other leaders in our church to try to determine just week to week. We are planning on meeting this Sunday morning, still with two services, uh, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We ask you to, to register your, your reservation on Facebook event page, on our church's event page to reserve your seats and we're doing everything again we're cleaning the multiple times we're cleaning the restrooms and doing all that I, I talked with our health department the director of the Loudoun County Health Department commended us said we were doing everything that they asked for us to do and being as safe as we could so I'm, I'm thankful for that but, but I'm saying that to you we're trying to, to keep everybody safe um, this this week again I'm asking you to wear masks at least until you get into the building and get your seat and all that stuff not not for any reason except that's one more precaution we are being over the top uh, cautious with all of this but we don't have any outbreaks with the outbreak two weeks ago with the one family that that tested positive they socially distanced in the youth meeting where the student was at Nobody else tested positive that was there that night. We've contacted all of them. They've been tested, all of that, no symptoms. Several have been tested, some were not, but there's no symptoms with anybody. So we're doing what's right, and I think that probably if we do that, we can avoid having any more positive tests. But I need you to help us. This Sunday, we're planning on meeting as scheduled, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Right now, some of you maybe are waiting or a little bit concerned or something. I'm not sure. So it seems like um, uh, there's not as many people registered. A uh, couple, two or three weeks ago, we were pretty close to our capacity. Over 100 in each service had registered or reserved seats. Uh, right now, we only have about, uh, about 40, I think, a little less than 40 for both service combined. So um, we're, we're going to leave it open this week and see. It's, um, it's hard for me to preach to, to 15 people in that big old building. Uh, so I, I don't know that that's, uh, that that's what we will do the following week. I'm not sure. We might combine it back to one service. We might uh, uh, move to the parking lot. We might be online. I don't know. 
we're having to walk together through this time, through these uncertain times, but we are praying daily and seeking God's face to determine how to best do that, okay? So I'm trying to be as transparent as I know how, I'm trying to be as open and honest with you and telling you, I know these are tough times and tough decisions for all of us. So we're going to have to walk through it together. So I'm going to give you some scripture that I use uh, and I encourage others to use when you're making tough decisions, specifically for parents right now who are trying to decide, are you going to send your children back to school? Um, and and I, the, the superintendent of Knox County was just saying he was going to give furlough to any of the teachers who didn't feel safe to come back right now. I was surprised at that. They're unpaid, but he's saying, if you want to be gone a semester, we will hold your job and you don't have to have to worry about that. I was pleased with that. I think that's a wise comment on their part, alleviating some of the stress and anxiety maybe for a teacher. But that's a tough decision to make. So, so uh, I know there's a lot of folks have to make these decisions, and how do you make them? How do you feel good about it when you've made the decision? So we're going to look at some scripture to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, other announcements that I need to make. Today we sent the buckets of blessings uh, to New Mexico. We, we shipped that off uh, earlier this, this afternoon. So just, just for your information, we'll collect again in a month or so. Um, uh, again, my goal is to, for us to return the last week with an outdoor kind of gathering. We'll just see if, if, these, if we have any more um, uh, uh, numbers, upticks in, in the Loudoun County area or whatever might happen. So uh, this, Saturday, this Saturday night, 8 p.m., that's uh, July 18th, I need the New Providence Mighty Men of Prayer and Disinfectant to join me at 8 o'clock for cleaning the building again. And uh, so if you'll do that, then we'll have some time of prayer after that. Again, like we've been doing, Pastor Gary will be online uh, um, this coming Sunday night. Or I think actually he's not going to do it, but uh, Brother Charles is going to lead the Sunday school. And if you haven't heard Charles teach, uh, th this is a sharp guy. He's actually a little smarter than me. And, and a lot smarter than Gary. No, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, G. Don't don't cut me off. I forgot he's in control of this. Uh, he's, he's a lot smarter than me, a little bit smarter than, than G, maybe. But anyway, he's going to do the adult Sunday school, and, and I promise it'll be a blessing. So tune in still 6 o'clock on Facebook Live for that, okay? In-person worship this Sunday morning, uh, 9 a.m. and 11. 11 a.m. will be uh, uh, broadcast on Facebook Live. Mask ministry is going well. But I'm, I'm asking you now, we need some more masks. Y'all have made a bunch, but I'm, I'm just telling you we need some more. Now that the schools are going back, we sent some, I think, to one of the high schools maybe today or yesterday um, that they requested them. And I saw some other people posting on Facebook. I think more people are getting serious about that. So those of you who have been making masks, thank you. You're awesome. Uh, keep it up, please. I, I know we may not have time to do a lot, but anything you can do is greatly, greatly appreciated. Children, adults, anybody, and everybody's selling them now. You can find them in every department store, grocery store, hardware, everybody, but we're giving them away as a ministry with the reminder that God loves these people and, and our church loves them, so please keep that going, okay? All right, I think that's all of the announcements that I need to make here for you. And then uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew. And uh, I'm, going, I'm going to tell you, when we're trying to figure out how to make a tough decision, I'm, I'm telling you that the best way to start is to start in prayer, okay? So I want you to, to look at Matthew chapter 6. We've been in chapter 6 a couple of times in the last little bit. But at verse number 5, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 5, and Jesus gives us some instruction about prayer, okay? So Matthew 6, 5 through 13 is the text we're going to start with, and then I'm going to give you three things, three key factors when you're trying to make a, a decision. For instance, should I send my children back to school? Should we, we uh, uh, continue to meet online as, as the church family? Should we continue to meet face-to-face -face as the church family? Should we do those other things, okay? So I'm going to share those. Those. This, this is how I'm trying to approach those decisions, all right? So beginning at verse number 5 in Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus is speaking. Remember, this is the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is speaking, and he says, When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, and they, they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, 
When you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Okay, let me stop right there at the end of verse 8 for just a moment and tell you just a couple of key words in that, in that passage. Jesus says a couple of things when he begins this message, this, this paragraph or this portion of the Sermon on the Mount. He uses the phrase, when you pray. So when you pray indicates the word when indicates Jesus assuming or saying, I know that you all are going to pray. So prayer should not be an option for us. Prayer should be a sure thing that we are doing. We should be involved in prayer. And we should pray about all the decisions of our life, all the decisions in our lives, what, what we're doing and uh, when we're doing it and all that. Certainly in a situation, in a time like we have right now in our culture, we need to be praying about things and asking God, should I go do this? Should I buy that? Should I wait for a, for a season before I buy it or make, the, make that decision? What, what's the process? So he said, when you pray, knowing that you are going to pray, he said, don't be like a hypocrite and try to pray and make it some big flowery thing that you're trying to impress people with. He said, that's what the hypocrites do. They stand on the street corner and want everybody to know that, that all of this stuff out there is, is what we should do. And I want you to know, and God, look at me. I'm so great. He said, don't do that. When, when you're praying, it's a personal communication. And it is a communication. It's not one-sided. It's not a lecture we're giving to God or a speech we're making to God. Prayer is designed to be a communication with God. When we talk with Him and we listen for him to speak to us, for whatever he's saying. So he says, don't be like them that they love to stand up in a public place and do it, but instead go into a private place, get serious where you don't have any distractions. When I'm praying, I've told people before, when I'm praying, I pray with a notepad or a piece of paper laying beside of me because sometimes my mind will drift or I'll, I'll wander a little bit. I'll typically put my phone on silence so I can't be bothered with the phone call. And if you've tried to call me during my prayer time, I apologize that, that I didn't answer your call, but I'm speaking to someone more important than you, if you understand. So I try to have that conversation. Then somebody calls me and they don't leave a message. I'm not calling you back. I got enough problems. I don't want to go, but if just leave a message. Preacher Mark, call me back. And I, I always do. When I see that message, I'll call you back. But if you don't leave me a message, even if your name is in my, my address book and it says that Pastor Gary called me, I don't call Pastor Gary back. He knows the rules. If you want to talk to me, leave me a message. Send me a text. Hey, call me when you get a minute. We do that to each other. I just got a message from Tony Arnold just a couple hours ago. He said, hey, when you got a minute, give me a call. He knew I was doing something or I would have, I would have responded to him immediately. Took me about an hour. You know why? I was studying for this message tonight. So he didn't bother me. And then when I was finished with this, I texted him. Hey, I'm available. If you want to give me a call? He, a few minutes later, he does. That's the way for me to do that and keep my prayer life intact. So I, I pray with that thing. And if I have some thought in my mind, I need to call somebody. I need to so that I just get a thought in my mind. I need to, to make this visit or do it. I'll just stop my prayer line, stop my prayer time, write that down and drop my pen and paper and leave it there. And then I will continue my prayer time. I don't want to be interrupted, but sometimes in my own mind, I get interrupted. Okay? So, but I do that in my, in my private time, in my prayer uh, closet. And that's not a physical closet for me. I know in the war room, uh, Priscilla Schreier, that was part of her, her prayer. Um, I, 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 I thought it was kind of cool that she actually did that. I don't have a prayer closet as such. Mine's a, a mental closet. I just kind of close off everything around me. It says, when, when I pray, God hears me. I mean, he hears me in that private prayer, and He'll reward me, and He'll give me wisdom, which is what I pray for every day, but He'll also give me understanding and, 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 and ability to teach and share and, and help people with what they're, they're dealing with. So He says, when you pray, don't use vain repetitions. I used to do that a lot. I'd pray, um, and, and we, we even teach people, and our kids in particular, pray, uh, um, God is great, God is good, let us thank Him for our food. And that's okay to teach them that, but that's a vain repetition. You're just saying the same words typically don't mean it. But what I'm trying to do when I tell my children that 
35 years ago, I was trying to teach them just the practice of prayer. Right now, my grandchildren, especially uh, Judah and Ramey, when they pray at my house for dinner in particular, they pray, thank you for the food, amen. And that's all they pray. They don't pray anything big flowery. Now, Britton, my 10-year-old, and Briley, my nearly 13-year-old, their prayers are much more involved. Their nighttime prayers with those girls are much more involved. They're praying for people. They're praying for our mission partners. They're praying for buckets of blessings. That They're doing all of that and praying for their church. And so, so they're learning how to move beyond a vain repetition. So Jesus said, don't do that, but instead um, pray to God, with, not with a, a lot of words, but just be faithful, ex say exactly what you want him to, to, to know, what you really on your heart. And then he gives us what we call the model prayer. And you, you know the model prayer from, from Matthew chapter chapter 6. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And I, I just now, um, uh, that's not the way I wrote it down because my, my notes are in New King James and I realized I just preached that in King James. That's how I learned it and that's how I memorized that passage. But the, the idea, Jesus said, pray like this. You, you know you're praying to your heavenly father. He's holy and he's right. And you want his will to be done. Now, if you want to decide about sending your kids to school, you need to first of all say, I want God's will to be done. That I'm trying to, to do that in my prayer. Okay? <clears throat> then, three things that I want you to do. Number one is to pray. Okay? Pray about this decision. Should I send my children to, to uh, back to school? Psalms 139.23 gives us a place to start in our prayer. Now, Jesus has just told us in the model prayer how to pray. He's told us just before that model prayer uh, the, the, the posture and, and the position and all that. But in a very familiar passage, Psalm 139.3, David says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. David said before he, he uh, really gets involved in an intimate relationship, communication, prayer, he says to God, Lord, I need you right now to search me. Search my heart. You try me. Because what happens is we often pray with an agenda, not necessarily an intentional agenda, but we go into our prayer time kind of slanted on the front end. I, I really don't want my kids to go back to school, so I'm going to pray and try to find justification for them not to go back to school. That's the wrong way to pray. Or I, I, I pray, God, I want you to help me um, uh, because I want my kids to go back to school, but everybody's saying this stuff, so so I want them. I want to find. So give me some scripture to to, to stand there. That that's the wrong way to pray. David said, if you're going to really pray with an honest communication with God, here's what we do. We pray, God, search my heart. First and foremost, I'm asking you to search my heart. Try me. Make sure that I'm clean. In Psalm 51, David says, search me and try me. I've sinned. Wash me with hyssop so that I can be clean before you. Lord, I want to hear your voice clearly. I don't want my will to be done. I want your will to be done. Jesus spoke those words in the Garden of Gethsemane. We need to remember that we're not looking for our decision. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's a great word. All of that is about your prayer time. Go into your prayer time asking God to search you and search your heart to make sure that it's clear of any preconceived ideas or plans or, or thought. Lord, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm being as honest as I know how to be. I don't know. I've heard both sides. I've heard conspiracy theories. I've heard the CDC. I've heard the governor. I've heard the school superintendent. I've heard Preacher Mark. I've heard all of these people with, with all of their opinions, and I just don't know. So, Lord, try my spirit. Make sure that I'm clean and clear. I want to be clean before you because I don't want to, to force my will but your will to be done then don't lean on your own understanding. Don't try to figure this thing out logically. I'll tell you right now, there's not a lot of logic that you can find in this because we can't, we, we can't seem to put our foot on the, on the truth, if you will. 
All of us are hearing from different people. You can hear one doctor say you should do this. Another doctor with as many credentials say you shouldn't do exactly the same thing. So it's very confusing for those of us who are out here just trying to be faithful. So we trust the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't try to figure this out on your own. Trust in Him. He will direct your paths. God loves you. He's always loved you and wants the best for you and your children and your school and the teacher in your class. You may be worried about the teachers or the custodians or somebody else, and, and I get all of that. Me too. I'm, I'm praying for them. It's increasing my prayer time. Let me say this to you as well. I don't know yet what Bless the Schools ministry is going to look at, but I believe now... As I've been praying and, and talking to some folks the last uh, two or three weeks, I believe that the last 11 years of that ministry we call Bless the Schools, I think it was laying a groundwork and a foundation for this year. I believe that us developing the relationships that we have in the schools with teachers, faculty, administrators, superintendents, school leaders at all levels. I think it's because this year, the schools and the teachers and all of those people I just mentioned are going to need us more than ever before. I think they're going to need, probably this year, right now, um, Kim told me yesterday in the Lenore City Schools, they're not going to allow them to bring in baked goods and cooked foods and all that, even a packaged uh, food from the deli at one of the, the grocery stores. They're not going to allow us to take that in. They're going to have uh, pre-packaged individual snacks, little Debbie kind of things. Well, I, you know, we'll do some of that, but I, I hate the thoughts of that. So I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but I'm telling you now in advance, we're going to, they're going to need us this year. I don't know if they're going to let us on campus or not. Not because they don't love us, but because they're trying to protect us, the school, the students, everybody. So it's all kind of up in the air right now. So uh, what can we do? What should you do, again, with your own children? Pray, talk to the Lord honestly, ask God to search your heart. Then don't lean on your own. And don't, don't try to figure this thing out on your own. This is a spiritual decision. And a spiritual decision is important for us uh, because we have to understand what God is saying. So how do you pray? Well, another passage, Luke chapter number 11. Luke 11, verse nine through, verses 9 through 13. Jesus speaking in Luke eleven nine, 9, he says this, and I hope you're writing these passages down, or uh, I think or they're posting them on there as well, and I want you to, to go back and, and reread these yourself later tonight, or in the next few days, write them down and go over them every single day when you're trying to make these decisions. These, by the way, should not be snap decisions. It shouldn't be something that we do just in a moment. It should be something that we do as we're considering this and seeking God and let he, give Him time to speak to you. You may have to declutter your life and give Him a little bit of time because there's so much other stuff going on that you're not really listening or not, not able to hear Him plainly and clearly. So Luke 11, 9 through 13, here's a, a great instruction. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Verse number nine is a key verse in prayer period. Jesus promised us. He said, if you will ask, and he tells us, ask. Don't, don't, don't neglect this step. Ask the Lord, God, should I send little Tommy, little Susie back to school right now the, for the day the school's open? Should I do? Ask God. Don't just ask for other people. That's fine to ask their opinions. But right now, this is a spiritual decision. And these children are your children. They're not anybody else's. Every family's decisions are different. It's hard for us to decide. Several churches in Lenore City last week went back to online services only. A church in Atlanta, I just told you a moment ago, has, has canceled their services, their face-to-face their -face services, for the next five months. I just can't even believe that. But I'm not the pastor of that church. I'm not there. I don't know what the process was. I'm not going to question them. That's the, they've got to stand before God as the pastor and leaders of that church. I've got plenty enough to be concerned about when I stand before God for every decision I make with this church. You, I mean, how many times have I failed all of you? A lot is the answer. Jesus said, ask. If you want to know, ask. Then he says, it will be given to you. If you will ask, I will give this to you. Then he says, seek. Seek God. Don't, don't just ask, okay, God, here's the question. Should I send Joey and, and Susie back to school? Amen. And then say, well, I'm waiting on God to give me an answer. 
Seek that. Seek an answer from God. Seek a, a, an opportunity to listen to God. Sometimes a great thing to do, by the way, is be quiet in your prayers. Keep your same posture, but you're bowing your head and you're praying and you talk to God, give Him your list or whatever's going on, and then just be real quiet. And just see what He says. See if He brings a scripture to your mind. See if He brings a song, a, a, a spiritual song, a hymn or something to your mind. See if He brings back a sermon, a Sunday school lesson that your teacher taught or Pastor Gary's been teaching or something you, you read uh, as a quote of the day kind of thing or you read in your devotion. Just listen a little bit. Just see what God has to say. Seek and you will find. He's promising us, ask and it will be given to you. God will give you the direction. Seek Him and you'll find Him. You'll find what He has to say. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask God. Knock on the door. Just before this passage, there's a passage that talks about a, a man who goes to a neighbor in the night and he knocks on the door and he just keeps knocking until the neighbor finally gets up. Well, we don't have to be that kind of persistent with God. He's not going to be angry with us. But we need to, to, to be willing to go back. How many times should you pray the same prayer? I have no idea. It's, sometimes I pray and I can pray at one time and I'm it's good. My, my, my confidence is good. My, I just feel like God's heard it. Sometimes I'll pray the same prayer day after day. I prayed for my sons, both of them, from the time they were in the, in the cradle and, and sleeping at the foot of our bed as infants, uh, just a few days old. I began to pray for the woman that they would someday marry. And I prayed for that, not every single day, but many, many, many times. I prayed for that for the next 25 years until they found their spouses and God brought And I think that my prayer, but I kept asking, I kept knocking, I kept seeking. And God answers prayers. Same thing is true with this. We need to ask God, should we keep the church open to meet face to face? Should we try to, and I'm making these, I'm having the same process with should we go to only one service instead of two? Do we do we have enough space to do that? And it's a, it'll be determined by several things. I'm seeking God. I'm watching and seeing how many people sign up to attend the services, all those things. And I'm using all of that. Henry Blackaby says that when we pray, God answers us in a couple of specific ways. Number one, God answers us through prayer. We can hear His voice. Number two, He answers us through the Word, through the Bible. Number three, He answers us through people around us, through spiritual influencers. And then He answers us through circumstances. Now, the problem is we will often take any one of those things and make a decision. Blackaby encourages us, and I agree with him, that we should wait until all of those things line up. If Scripture, my prayer life, my, my pastor's teaching and preaching, the, the circumstances, if all of that lines up together, then I think that's what God is saying to me. To do that, I've got to wait on the Lord. And waiting on Him is something we're typically not good at. We make snap decisions, and we can often be um, uh, aggravated or disappointed in that. Ask. Seek, knock, it will be open. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son, I love this, verse 11, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? God loves you, friend. He loves you and wants the very best for you. Every good father that's out there listening tonight, every good mama, good uncle and aunt and grandparent, every good caregiver in any capacity wants the best for those that are under our care. We all do. And if we know how to do that and how to give good care, imagine how much more God does. So if this is a concern for you, should I send my kids back? Bring it to God. Ask Him to search your heart. Make sure that you are clean and clear, no preconceived ideas. Ask Him, Lord, I'm going to trust in You. I'm going to listen to You for wisdom. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm asking You to direct my path. Show me what You want to do. Okay, then when you do those things, the next um, statement, we pray and do those very things that I'm talking about. We talked about how to pray with the Lord's Prayer. Don't stand on the street corner. Take this as a personal, private conversation to the Lord. When you pray, clear clear your heart, clean your mind up, think about this, and try to try to get washed up spiritually. Then come to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm asking for your will to be done. I'm asking for your wisdom, your understanding, not mine. 
Then the second thing is for us to understand the faith. Understand the faith. This idea of faith is, is a hot topic right now because people will say that if you're not meeting on campus, it's because you don't have the faith that God will trust you. Other people will say, well, if you have the faith, then you won't have to meet on campus. You know that God will get the message out some other way. And there's two schools of thought. There's some people who are just trying to bounce this around back and forth. There are people in our own congregation at the great, glorious, good New Providence Baptist Church in both of those camps. There's people who say, I'm not wearing a mask. I don't care if the preacher does ask me to. Okay. There's people who say, well, I'm glad the preacher finally asked everybody to wear a mask. Maybe now they will. Okay. I don't know the answer. I'm just trying to protect you. I'm trying to love you. So I'm asking you to do that. But I know there are differing opinions out there. I don't even know what my opinion is. I'm not sure. I don't have a specific opinion that this is the, this is the, the, the end all. I'm just saying I'm going to do everything I can to protect everyone I can so that I can continue to preach the gospel to you. So we can continue to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world because I still believe they need to hear about Jesus. So uh, when we understand faith, remember the passage in Hebrews 11, verse number 1, says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The NIV says it a little bit differently, a, a little plainer English for us. It says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith says, I, I'm just sure this is going to happen. Faith is a confidence. It's not a wish. It's not a, a, that, that kind of idea. It's a confidence that God's going to do it. So we, when we pray, the, the beginning of this conversation, we have to pray with confidence. I've said before, if you pray for rain, then go find, go dig your umbrella out of the closet. Don't, don't say, well, I'm praying for rain, but God's probably not going to send it anyway. Go get your umbrella. If you feel like that you need rain, God said, ask and, and it shall be given to you. Ask God, pray with confidence, pray with faith that he's going to hear you and he's going to respond. It, right now, instead of you posting on Facebook, what should we do? Should I send my kid to school? What do you think about it? Instead of getting all of that, that's fine to do that in addition. But first of all, go to the Lord in faith, in prayer, trusting him, cleaning your heart, cleaning your mind, your thoughts, asking God, show me what to do. Speak to me, tell me what to do. Okay? And when you do that, he will give you an answer. He promised us in Luke 11 that he would respond to us. Well, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, another key verse to this, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, I heard that verse kicked around a lot in the last little bit, especially uh, during this COVID time, and people who are saying, we don't need to close the services. We don't. God didn't make us afraid. No, he didn't. But God also didn't make us foolish. In that phrase, we, we love that first phrase, God did not has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love. And then we stop it. But the end of the verse says, and of a sound mind. A sound mind means I'm going to be I'm going to be grounded and founded on the word of God. He's given me the ability to search scripture, to hear his voice through the word of God, and when I hear him to respond to that. He's not made me afraid. He's made me a person of sound mind that I'm willing to listen to him and follow his leadership and his wisdom. That verse a moment ago in Luke 11, down at verse number 11, said if your son asks for bread from any father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for an, a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? He said if you, a sound mind says God's not going to do foolish things. We should not do foolish things. We need to practice um, that. That's what faith really means. It doesn't mean I'm going to close my eyes and jump out of an airplane without a parachute. That's not faith. That's suicide. You're not going to survive that. Faith says I'm going to check my parachute before I jump. Then I'm trusting that my parachute will open when I pull it. Okay, that, that's it. Faith says I've got a sound mind. I'm not going to tempt the Lord my God. Satan tried to tempt Jesus, and Jesus' own answer to Satan was I'm not going to tempt God. I'm not going to throw myself off this building. I know his. I know what the Word of God says. I am the Word of God, Jesus could have said to Satan. He said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tempt God and use his word. I'm not going to do that. 
So we too should not tempt God with foolish things. Now, if God tells you to do something bold and brave and, and tells you to, to charge the enemy lines, then grab a shovel, a, a, a weapon, whatever it is, and take off. But until he tells you that when with you, with a clear heart and mind, and usually when you do that, you say, well, I'm trusting the Lord, but man, this does not make any sense to me. A lot of things in my life, as I've done them, have, have been that outcome. When I came here to New Providence Church 22 years ago, uh, I've, I've used that phrase to you before. I loved my last church. Not only loved, I love my last church where I was pastored in Wartburg, Tennessee. I love those folks. Several of them come on every time we're online and, and, and watch along and, and do Bible studies. They send me messages back appreciating the service. I love those folks. When I, when I was there, man, they loved me. It was a great experience. We were so, doing so well. Came here in New Providence not long before I came. It had burned. The building had burned. They had built a new building, but the church had kind of split. There wasn't hardly anybody here. We, we were on the move, man. Church was growing like crazy up there. Built a new building, a new family life building. My sons were there, teenage boys. We had a ball field in the backyard, a basketball court, and, and, and ping, ping pong tables in the family life center attached to it right beside of the house it was just good man i loved it came down here i'll never forget preached my trial sermon here 72 people here when i preached not i told a couple of my cutesy little jokes there wasn't even a smile in the place got in the car to head back to Wartburg, and my wife looked at me and anthony was in the back seat he said dad those people are not very happy are they i said no doesn't seem like it son Kim looked at me, a tear running down her cheek, and she said, we're going to have to go there, aren't we? And that was really our whole family's uh, 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 thought about this. That was the phrase, we're going to have to. Didn't want to, man, oh man. And I'm so thankful now that we did. It didn't make sense. We were so blessed. And, and, and But to come, man, God has done things in my life since I came here. I can't even explain that I don't believe I ever would have gotten to do at the last church. Great people, but it's a different kind of ministry. So he, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just don't have your preconceived plan. You go with a clean heart. I didn't have it. I didn't need to leave, didn't have to leave. They love me. I love them. All that stuff. But it was God's will. So I trusted him. Should I do this, Lord? And God said yes. And so we obeyed him. Pray. And cleanse your heart. Don't come in with a preconceived idea or notion or plan. Seek the Lord. Think, trust Him when you do. Trust Him by faith. So pray, understanding faith. And finally, here's the, here's the key to it, I believe, is we need to listen. We need to listen to what God says. Now, how do you hear the voice of God? What do you need to do to hear Him so you, you know that it's being clearly spoken to you? Well, the passage I want you to turn to directly is um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, Verse 16, 2 Timothy 3, 16. That particular verse says this, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine or your belief system. It's profitable for reproof or that is for, for um, telling someone that what you've done is outside of the world. This is our standard, that's reproof. Or correction, when somebody does something, you can say, this is what you should have done. This is what the Word of God says. And for instruction in righteousness. Instruction, telling you how to live your life, how to do those things. Several years ago, Kim and I, um, were, were, our children were getting ready to start school. And we were trying to make a decision. Should we send our kids to a Christian school or should we um, uh, uh, send them to a public school? We, didn't, we never thought about ourselves homeschooling. That really wasn't a, a real strong option uh, when our kids were young. So those were really the two options. We had a Christian school nearby, and there was a, um, uh, then public schools that we, uh, was close to our home as well, so we were trying to make the decision. Both she and I were uh, students of public schools. And so we prayed about it. We went and interviewed with the, pub, with the Christian school, and some of the things at the Christian school that we were close to that, that was offering this, this opportunity really wasn't was just it just didn't fit us as we went in prayed about it and and i really i was a youth minister and i thought you know this probably is what we need to do so i, I said god you're gonna have to show me i'm gonna try to cleanse my heart and my mind exactly what i'm telling you try to be clear with this but you then show me i'm not gonna lean on my understanding should i do it to be an example of these others 
whatever. We went there and got to get the interview and came back and began to pray. And we just could not get a piece about it. Just could not do it. Then as I'm, I'm reading the Bible, okay? Now, this, this prayer is on my heart. I've talked to God. I've told Him, Lord, we're trying to make this decision. We want you to lead us. And so I, I believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God because the Bible says that. So I believe it, okay? That, so settle that in your heart. I believe Scripture. So as I'm reading Scripture, not really with this, but when I'm praying, I'll pray starting out in the morning. I never close my prayers. I've been in prayer now really for about 40 years. One single prayer, it changes, uh, paragraphs change occasionally. But I'm just praying, listening to God, asking Him, should I do this? How should I proceed? What decisions should we make? So as I'm doing that, I'm praying this, Lord, should we send our kids to, to private school? Should we send them to public school? That was our big decision long before COVID-19. So as I'm praying one day, I'm, and then I'm, I'm reading in Scripture my daily devotion, and just, um, I don't know if I was preparing to teach, or I don't remember what the occasion was, but I came across the, the, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, that says this, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this age. Jesus gave us what we know as the Great Commission. And as I read that, the Lord just spoke to my heart and he said, Mark, I want you to send your boys to the public school. And I thought, well, that, that, that doesn't match this. But I'm not to lean on my own understanding. I'm to let him direct my path. And as I began to pray, I said, Lord, I, I believe that you're telling me to do this, but I need some more clarity. As I prayed about that and about the Great Commission, he said, if you abandon the public schools, your influence with your sons and with your wife, if you do that, who's going to share the gospel there? Who's going to be the one that will preach? And then I just began to, in my spirit, I, my mind ran to other verses of Scripture. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, how can they know unless they hear? And how can they hear unless someone preaches? And how can they preach unless someone is sent? So when I hear that, and, and I'm just listening to these things, and God is bringing together and, and applying this to my sin. So the way that we hear from God is to listen from God. And I believe the greatest way to listen, I touched on this Sunday in, in the message Sunday morning, the greatest way to listen is to read the Word of God. It will speak directly into your life, into your situation. You need to be listening to the Lord, to what He has to say to you, and He will speak clearly to you. He says he does that in 2 Timothy 3, 17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. God wants you to be prepared. He wants you to be prepared for the decision about sending your child back to school or doing this online, and it's a personal decision. The next thing I want to add to this is just something I've heard this week. We need to be careful about this thing, and I think I said this Sunday too. I'd never heard this phrase, mask shaming that we're shaming people for wearing a mask or we're shaming them for not wearing a mask. Get over yourself, mind your own business, let God convict you of what you should do and don't try to be the dictator to everybody around you, okay? We don't need to do that. Now you say, well, you just ask us all to wear a mask. I did ask you to do that in this particular setting. I'm not asking you to do it anywhere else. I'm asking you to be considerate for these folks around, around us. If you don't wear a mask, it's not like we're not going to let you come in. You're welcome to come right in and just sit down and have church with us. But if it might save one person from even getting sick, not even including the more serious things, ending up in an ICU or dying or whatever, my goodness, aren't you willing to sacrifice that for a couple of minutes to walk past and get down to you? I mean, really? We, we need to understand that. Even though Paul said I, all things are, are okay for me, I have freedom to do all of that, but not all things are wise for me. I don't really need to do that. It's not necessarily smart. So that was just a side note. In this, Listen to what God says to you. Listen. This past Sunday, I also mentioned this verse in 1 Peter 1.25. The word of the Lord endures forever. God's word existed long before the coronavirus. 
God's word existed a long time ago. It, his word is still true and right. Humans will come and go. We'll, we'll uh, live and die. <clears throat> but God's word will stand. It stood for the last 4,000 years or so from the Old Testament through the New Testament. We've had the word of God that has stood. Has It's been challenged and battled and fought against, but the word of God still stands, it, and it will. But if you want to hear from God, you can't expect, you know, the Jeff Foxworthy, the old thing, here's your sign. You know, people say, I, I wish I, I, I heard this. Or, here's your sign. You knuckle. Well, here's your sign. Read the word of God. If you really want to know what God thinks, what God says about a topic, what God is trying to direct you to do, what the will of God is, any of that stuff, ask him. Look for where he speaks to us. His word will speak directly into your life situation. I promise you, the Great Commission was not what I was thinking about when my six-year-old was getting ready to start, or I guess probably five-year-old, was getting ready to start kindergarten and I was trying to make a decision. I didn't think about the Great Commission. What I thought about was my little boy and what should we do, how can I best influence my church and doing, I was thinking about all of those things. And then when I sound, I thought, you know, the, the, for me, the Christian environment, the Christian school, it seems like it's a, it's a little more controlled. They don't have the drug problem in, in middle school and high school. They don't have all of that stuff going on. It's what I'm thinking. So it made sense to protect my child. God said, I'll protect your child. You be faithful to me. I've called you to carry the gospel. So for me and my wife at that time, it was to make that decision. Once we started in there, we never looked back. We ask God other times, should we take our children out of school next year? Should we start in, in public school or homeschooling those are, or, or, or prior Christian school? And we listened to the Lord. And then when we felt like we had a word from him, he still he said the job's not finished. There are children who need help. So we instead, God said, I need you to get involved. So Kim started subbing and started working in a volunteering in a classroom. We started doing ministry. I started reading in the schools a long time. When our kids were, were children, when I pastored in, in Wartburg, I went and read in the classrooms up there. We didn't have a bless the schools ministry as such. Came down here, God developed that. So we've always been actively involved in schools. That's been our burden from that conversation and that prayer 30 years ago with our Savior, what do you want us to do? So I believe God will tell you if you ask him, you, you need to pray honestly. Search me, Lord. Make sure my heart's clear. Don't let me trust myself. Let me just totally trust you. I want to do that. I want you to, I want you to tell me and I'm going to trust you by faith and to hear from you. I want to listen to what you're saying and I'm going to listen to what the Word of God says and, and I'm going to, to, do, to listen to the Word of God, by the way. You need to be reading the Word of God. Get in there and read and look at and listen to the Word of God. Listen to your pastor. I love you. I'm not going to tell you that you should go send your kids to school and, and you shouldn't send your kids or whatever it is. And I think that God can give a different response to different families. He may say to you, I want you to put your kids back in school in Loudoun County, in Lenore City, in Knox County, wherever you, you can take your kids. I want you to do it. And say to another family, I want you to, to bring your kids to, to online learning through your home. I, I don't know. And you say, well, why, why would God contradict? He's not contradicting himself. He's telling you this, and he's telling somebody else this. He doesn't necessarily have to tell us all the same thing. He's got a different plan for us. We don't know how he's going to impact other people with those things. So we have to trust him individually, not leaning on your own understanding, not taking uh, uh, somebody else's suggestion or advice, but trusting in the Lord. And I believe he'll speak to you. I believe in our church family. I believe there will be some people who send their children back to school. I believe there will be some people who, who want their children to be involved in distance learning. My wife works in the school. Y'all know Miss Kim. You know that she for, for the 30 years she's worked in school, every fall she picks up the flu or uh, respiratory uh, problems or sinus infections or strep throat. She's done it every single year. Every year she's got, she, because she works in kindergarten, she's the snot wiper. She's the one who the kids come up to and hug on her and she hugs on them. She walks them to the clinic and she does all those things. She and I have been talking about her going back. Do you need to do this? We've prayed about it. We've asked the Lord to direct us. She's planning on going back to school. She's going to do it. And, she, and I said, honey, if, if you don't, if you haven't had it already, we think she had it and was undiagnosed 
Back in January, she had all the symptoms, but we weren't taking COVID-19 tests. She had a strep test and a flu test, and she was. She, they, they said, we think it's probably a virus. Had all the symptoms. We think she got it then, so we don't think she's susceptible for it again. But I said, honey, if you didn't have it back then, you're going to get it. I know her. She, she was going to be around these kids. and she's going to. But she believes that this is her ministry. She believes this is what God's called her to. So her decision is to do it. Not asking anyone else to make that decision. We're asking you to pray about it and ask God to do what he tells you to do. That's the critical truth here. We must determine and decide what God is saying to us. And then when my wife makes this decision, I don't expect any of you to say, Miss Kim, I think you're wrong with this. Then you're saying you think God is wrong because she's prayed, I've prayed, we think God has told us this. And I don't care who you are. I can't trust you more than I trust God. Do you understand? Same thing as what I'm going to, the same confidence I'm going to give to you when you pray. And if I say, hey, are you going to let your kids go back to school? And you say, no. I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to ask, do you, are you going to let your kids go? Yep. I'm, okay. I'm, I got your back. If you've prayed about it and asked the Lord, that's all we can do. And you say, well, what if I, I pray about it and they go to school and they get COVID-19? Okay. I'm sorry. But it's God has allowed that if that happens. What if you stay home and you get COVID-19? By the way, with all of us that are trying to make this decision, I've seen your kids at Walmart, seen y'all at, at, at Food City or wherever we're at. We're going to the parks. We're going to Dollywood. We're going to those other places. <clears throat> so be honest with yourself. If you, if you don't feel comfortable in that setting, <clears throat> ask the Lord. God, do you feel comfortable? And he's in control. I don't know what the answer is for you. Not sure. I don't know what the answer is for my, I've asked both of my sons with their children. I've got <clears throat> two sons. Uh, both of them have two children this year that are school aged <clears throat> and they're trying to make the decision. I don't know that they've, any of them have decided yet. I'm not trying to force them or influence them. I'm praying for them. God, give Anthony clarity. God, give Joseph a clear discernment. Help them to know what they should do. And I trust God. When they say, when my sons say to me, yep, they're going back to school or nope, we're going to do it distance, I'm going to say to God be the glory. I'm going to trust that. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing with any of you if you'll make this practice. Pray. Clear your heart. Clear your mind. Seek His will, not yours. And Father, let your will be done. <clears throat> trust Him in faith that He would, loves you and He's going to do this right word in your life. Don't misapply, misapply your faith. Think it means you're going to do one or the other. Faith means you're going to walk with a sound mind. You're not going to have the spirit of fear one way or another. When he tells you to do this, then do it. Just trust him. And finally, listen to what God says. Through prayers, through, through circumstances, through your, your Bible study personally, and through the people around you that are influencing. But I would ask you, make sure it's the right influences. Don't let somebody who's a radical one way or another try to dis uh, discourage you. And then make sure that all four of those ways, prayer, the Bible, circumstances, and wise counsel, make sure all of those line up together. When they do, you can trust that God is speaking to you personally, specifically, and he'll guide you. And you may say, well, I thought you were just going to say we should or we shouldn't. I, I can't because it's a different situation for each of us. But I can say, trust God. He's never, ever failed you. Father, I love you. I thank you for this day. Thank you for your word, all that you do. You're good. <clears throat> Father, I pray that tonight, as, as I've shared this script, these particular scriptures, I pray that the folks that are listening will meditate upon them, will listen clearly, and will respond to you, and they will know what, what decision they should make according to your will. Help us, Lord, to do that. I love you. I thank you for speaking to us. I thank you that we can have confidence that your will will be done and that you will speak to us individually and clearly and we can hear from you. But to hear, we have to listen. We have to be in the word. Help us to, it just seems like the last few months that has been just all up in my grill and all in my spirit and right before me, we must be in the word. Help us to do that. Lord, I love you and I thank you for this night and this word to my heart, the reminder that we should pray by clearing our hearts, clearing our minds, asking for you to search us with no personal agenda, trusting you in faith, understanding what it means to walk in faith, and listening to you. Lord, help me to do that with the tough decisions in my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Well, thank you for being with us during our Bible study tonight. If you have any questions or comments about the Bible study, I would encourage you to post those. I, I, <clears throat> I don't know what's been posted. I've not been watching, but I would encourage you to do that. <clears throat> post those uh, questions about the Bible study or send me a direct message, whatever it is, if you want to talk further about one of these. If you want me or one of the staff <clears throat> or all of the staff to pray with you about these decisions, let us know that too. We'll be honored to do that. Uh, we're, we're willing to do it. I, I want you to, to make the, the best decision for you and trust the Lord. So do that. And then again, if you have any more prayer requests, please list those. Miss Deb is in here with us now. So she's grabbing them from the from the screen as they, as they roll by. So uh, she'll pass those on along to me as well. Okay. Let me share a couple with you. Uh, well, we're going to come back. We're going to pray for the schools at the end here tonight, uh, <clears throat> real specifically, real, real personally. I ask you to continue to remember the the Varner family, the Ernie Varner family, with his home going this week. I watched the funeral service uh, on Facebook Live, which seemed a little bit strange, but uh, then they had the burial uh, graveside yesterday. Remember Angelia and their family, if you will. Uh, then our um, uh, uh, folks who've been in the in the hospital and had surgeries, Miss Yvette, Tony told me just a couple of hours ago, she's doing better today. Um, um, uh, really has, has done pretty well with her recovery. Miss Belinda Perky uh, with some surgery just the other day, last Friday as well. And then Mac Whitson, who we talked about at the very beginning, had a, a shot in his back, has another one in a month from now, but we just pray that will help to, to strengthen his back and help him. So, uh, the Varner family, the, the Arnold family, the Perky family, and the Whitsons. Would you join me as we pray for those four, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for prayer that it is real. Thank you for the, the comfort that it brings, for the encouragement and the hope that we experience through uh, uh, communicating with you. And Lord, thank you for speaking to my heart, even as I've prayed for each of these requests that, that, are, that we're mentioning right now. I've already been praying for them and about them and, and speaking to you about it, and I, I look for ways to minister. But I pray you'll touch these families, the Varner family, uh, Lord, with their loss and heaven's gain. They, they are confident that Ernie is in your presence, but that doesn't take away the ache of him not being in our presence. Uh, so so please just bless them, carry them today, and let them um, have a time of healing and bring folks around them to encourage and bless them through prayer and through your word and through uh, the memories that you've flooded their spirits with. Be with the, uh, the folks who've had some surgeries, both Miss Yvette and Belinda. I pray you'll be with them as they heal, be with their families as they minister to them and encourage them, help them. And I just pray you will watch over and love them. Give them a quick recovery, full and complete. Get them back up on their feet soon, uh, doing the things that they enjoy, for them presenting the gospel to the world and, and being role models and examples and the faithful witnesses that they are. Help them to do that. Then, Lord, I ask you to be with Brother Mac Whitson, my friend and, and just a fellow laborer and a, just a servant of God. That guy loves you. He loves to work. And, and I'm so thankful for him. I pray that this this medication, this this injection in his back this week will help him to, to recover. And Lord, I, I ask you to heal bodies and spirits and minds. And whether you use a supernatural means and just remove it, or you use medical practices or scientific discoveries, Lord, that's not my job to tell you how to do it. It's just my job to call on you as the great physician and saying we can't do it without you. Would you just put your hand of healing on Mac in any way you choose? Bless him. Bless Miss Connie as she ministers to him as they serve you together. Keep them in your hands and care. And Lord, I love you so much. I thank you for hearing our prayers. Now watch over us is our prayer. And I'm going to give you the praise as my promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we, we've got a couple of requests, I think, that have come across. Miss Deb, how many do you have there? Just, just a couple there. Uh, Connie was bitten by something on her back and a rash broke out. Doctors treating me for Lyme disease just in case. Bless your heart, Miss Connie. I, I hate that for sure. Uh, we just pray that, that that's not the case. Uh, that's not Lyme disease, but we will keep you in our prayers as well. Uh, we'll, we'll lift you up. Um, let's see here. G just pointed one out. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Miss Joan Poole. Um, uh, for the strength. I, she was reading in the Bible this morning and thought of the blessings that that uh, you have, uh, that God has sent to each of us. Boy, isn't it good how good our God is? Thank you for that, Miss Joan. I appreciate that. Um, uh, then then um, she, Deb, has just handed me a couple of prayer requests. Ron Spencer, 
uh, is uh, Ron, I, he may have led music here a time or two. He's been to church. He and Miss uh, Patsy been here several times. Long, long time friend of mine. Been a buddy of Pastor Gary's for about, I don't know, 40 years. They've been buddies a long time. And Ron's had some surgery, had an open wound that just wouldn't heal for like a year. Just had another surgery up in maybe the Cleveland Clinic. He was up somewhere up in Ohio. Oh, he had it in Knoxville. He went to the uh, to Cleveland Clinic. And had, just had the surgery. Think that it's going, that it's doing better. He's, uh, and I just saw that on Facebook. Is that the, is that the update that we have, G? Uh, but just want you to remember, Ron Spencer, good, good guy, great vocalist, uh, former school principal. Uh, when I was out in in Morgan County, I was around him. Uh, well, he was um, uh, out in the Morgan Anderson County area. Good guy. Remember Ron Spencer, Miss Miss Faith Wiseman. If you didn't hear, she was diagnosed with a, with a positive uh, COVID test. Right? Um, uh, I think that was this week. I believe I first saw that. So remember Faith, um, or as uh, Rebecca calls her, Faithy. Uh, remember a little Faithy as she uh, a little little sailor. Um, as she gets um, through that and gets back to gets back to work uh, as a sailor protecting the, our great nation. Then the Pinkston family continue to remember them. I'm not sure um, about uh, the, the, the Miss Jennifer Pinkston. She was the last one to, to be diagnosed with, uh, with a positive test. And she was, a, a, uh, both Daniel and Sarah were on the mend very much so, but uh, Jennifer was still struggling a little bit Sunday, but I've not spoken to her the last couple of days, tried to leave her alone. But Jennifer, we love you. We're praying for you and all your family. And uh, uh, we just want you, all you guys to get over this and get through it. So we're going to remember the Pinkston family. Then I also just saw Mike Davis. Please pray for my hearing to return. I uh, did not even know. Is that right? Didn't, didn't realize that Mike was having hearing problems. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it may be just this quarantine thing, Mike, and you are stuck in a house with... Well, let me stop right there. Um no, that was a bad joke. S say what? What? Quit whisper loud enough for me to hear you. They're telling me secrets and they won't tell me what it is. I don't know what it is, so I'm not sure. I think I just got in trouble. It won't be the first time today that I've been in trouble. But we're going to pray for you, Michael, and lift you up. Miss Connie will pray for you as well, and Miss Joan, okay? Let me pray for those. Father, I come to you right now asking you to hear those requests. And Lord, please um, let everybody understand my sense of humor. If I just said something I wasn't supposed to say, then forgive me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I'm just being silly and praying. But it is serious when somebody has a hearing problem or, or whatever is going on, any, any medical problem. I don't ever want to make light of it. But I also don't, don't want us to get discouraged and defeated about everything. I want to trust you and, and have some joy and some laughter in my heart and spirit. So be with Michael. Bless him in a very special way. Keep him in your hands and your care as you put your hand of healing on him. I ask you to be with Miss Connie Whitson as she uh, tries to, to figure out what happened and, and Lord, as the doctors treat her. Thank you for Miss Joan Poole, my friend and sister, for her. And thank you for letting your word speak to her today to, to realize the blessings in her life. Thank you for that, Lord. I just pray that you, you'll uh, give, her, give her grace through that. And Lord, be with um, uh, Ron Spencer and Miss Patsy as they deal with Ron's uh, uh, um, surgery and the recovery from that. Faith Wiseman getting over the COVID-19 virus. Be with her. Be with the Pinkstons family in, in our church that's had to deal with this. I just pray you'll, you'll help them get through this thing. Uh, love them. Hold them in your hands and care. Keep them in your hands. And Lord, I just ask you to, to watch over them and all the people in our church family. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to lift up these prayers. Keep them in our hearts. And we're going to remember uh, to always uh, trust you with your greatness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, let's see. Did I just miss one? I, I don't think I did, but um, yeah, I think I got them out. <laughs> Better watch it, preacher Mark. <laughs> well, there you go. Sorry, Miss Carolyn. I didn't call your name out when I said that. Okay. Anyway, let's see. We got any? Um, uh, Mike uh, Shooting uh, just asked us to uh, um, remember him in prayer. He's a little bit under the weather, so Mike will do that lifting you up in prayer as well. Again, I ask you to continue remember the Tehachi Baptist Church and the Navajos. Uh, we, we did get those buckets of blessings shipped off today, probably be there in about a week. So remember uh, to pray for those um, and then um, the lost in the community and all that. And we're going to pray at, again in a moment 
for our schools, and I'm going to ask uh, Miss Miss. Uh, or I'm going to ask Pastor Gary to pray for that, but I'm going to ask Deb to pray for um, Mike shooting, uh, but also um, the, the buckets of blessings, those things, and um, uh, the, our missionary partners, including the, the Navajo Reservation. But I ask you to pray for those in G. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to end it for us with the prayer for schools. All of the staff wives work in the schools. I don't know, Pastor Gary, have you all, has Cindy made a decision? Have you guys decided about her going back to school? She is going back uh, as well. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. okay, I'm not going to repeat that. I just had this big, long, serious prayer Bible study about asking the Lord, and he said she's going back to get her out of the house. So uh, anyway, uh, the, all of our staff wives work in the schools, so we need to pray for them. But I'm going to ask G to do that in just a moment. But Miss Deb, if you would pray for uh, um, the, the, our mission partners, especially our, our partners at, in the Navajo Reservation, and then uh, Brother Mike shooting. Would you do that? Father God, thank you for today and just thank you for this opportunity to come before you and just uh, lift up these prayer requests. Father, I just um, ask that you be with Mike and, and the situation and circumstance that he finds himself in. And just, he's under the weather, and Father, I just ask that you touch him and give him um, just a healing and help him to feel better and help him to be able to get back into um, doing the things that he needs to do and, and bringing glory to you. Father, I just uh, thank you that you are with us, um, whether we're here or we're in Tehachi, New Mexico, or Honduras, or Guatemala, or you can just think of all the places that we have been on mission, and I know that you are working in each of those mm. places, Father, and I pray that you um, just make yourself known to each of those missionaries that we have personal relationships with, because now it's when you can't have teams coming in to help you and support you and um, encourage you, you can get really discouraged. And so I just pray for each of those missionaries that you lift their spirits and help them to um, focus on you, to read their Bible, to continue to um, bring glory to you where they are in the situations and circumstances that they find themselves in a different country. And so, Father, I just pray that you uh, lift their spirits and continue to help them to do the work that you've called them to do. Father, thank you for the the church and how that they have responded with the buckets of blessings and um, I just pray a special prayer for Pastor Aaron and um, and for Teaspoon and for the Wingate Church and for Tahashi Baptist Church and just um, I just thank you that the, the, the blessings that have, they have already received with the buckets that were sent before and, and these that are coming I just pray that you continue to allow them to um, encourage the people on the Navajo Nation and give them opportunities to be able to share why he's given them out, especially to the new context, those that have not been in, um, able to come to the church. Um, so, Father, you've given them um, tools, and I just ask that you help him to continue to be faithful to spread the word. Um, you were just good, and I just thank you, Lord. These things I pray in your precious name. Thank you, Miss Deb. We appreciate that so very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there, a, did, did we miss any more? Uh, we got them all covered, I believe. If we missed you, again, we apologize. Please send us a direct message at that info at npbcloudon.org or a text message or Facebook Messenger or whatever, even post it on Facebook. If you want, if you have a prayer request that we've missed tonight, I apologize. It's real hard to catch them scrolling, so we're all three of us are trying to. But I ask you to send that on if we missed it, and then then tell us if we can share it publicly. We we will do that if you allow us. But if not, we'll just consider it a private prayer request, okay? Um, uh, and again, I, I just encourage you, Pastor Gary's going to pray in just a moment, our final prayer, asking you to, to be with us about the schools and all the, the families, parents making these decisions, and the administrators trying to make decisions, school boards and, and all of those folks. It's a, it's a tough decision, and it is now on us, just a couple more weeks. This is week number 18 we've been doing prayer meetings online. This is never in my life what I've, you could have told me and me believe this would be the case, but it is. And for 18 weeks, I've not been able to pull the, my tithes and offerings out of my check, out of my pocket and place it in an offering plate. We've not passed an offering plate around in 18 weeks is four and a half months been a long time so we've been asking you to, to give online you can do it through facebook through our web page there's places to d donate now or to give you can mail it in drop it by the church any of those things we encourage you to do that again services last two last two weeks have been low 
So uh, even though I've given mine in the chest that we have here, um, not a lot of people here. So we need you to do that. And I, I don't mean to always come to you sounding like I'm begging. I'm not. I'm thankful for you and for God's faithfulness, but I'm reminding you we need to keep that up, okay? We're going to keep doing everything we can to minister to you, and we thank God for you. You are awesome, and I love you. And finally, last re last request from me is this Sunday. Services began at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Go to Facebook Live. Uh, I'm sorry, go to Facebook Events and register your family for a seat and do it while you're wearing a mask. Do that just to get in practice. Because I'd love for you to wear a mask on Sunday if it's possible, at least again until you get into the building past the, the, the greeters and all that stuff and you get to your seat. Then if you want to take it off, you can. But I'm just encouraging you more. Really first time I've done this very strongly, but I just think we need to, to consider everybody. So I would encourage you, Wear your mask uh, until you get seated, and then um, it'll just be a blessing. You'll keep all those around you safe. And God so loved the world, He wants us to keep one another safe. All right? So do that. I love you, and I thank the Lord for you. Pastor Gary, would you pray and ask the Lord to be with our schools, school systems, family, ever? That's a big request, brother. Father, we just come to you this time asking you to cleanse and forgive us. Lord, we're thankful for all that you do. Lord, there's so many things you do that we're, we don't pay attention to. We're not aware of, Lord, but you're always doing it. Lord, as the school, as the time of reopening is coming on us, Lord, so many are running around in excitement and, Lord, a, a little bit of apprehension, Lord. I, I just can't imagine what they're all going through. Some friends of mine, their, their daughters teaching schools in another county, and they, they start back next week. And, Lord, they're a little bit afraid, a little bit worried, a little bit excited. All those things are going through their minds. And, Lord, I just lift all those up to you. All the teachers, the assistant teachers, the, the staff, uh, uh, the, the ones in the leadership roles that are having to make these decisions that, Lord, people just do not understand how hard it really is to, to make that call and to make those decisions. And no matter what you do, no matter what the decisions are, Lord, there's always two sides of the coin, and we realize that. But Lord, right now we need, we need to, as God's people, we need to realize there's two sides, and my side's not always the right side. Lord, we just need to be patient and understanding and, and forgiving. And Lord, I pray that we would do that in the days ahead. Lord, may all that we do and say bring honor and glory to your name. For it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go to the event uh, registration and sign up. Hey, this is a cool look. I may do this Sunday. Love you guys. God bless you. Have a great week.